the shop. So this morning I got myself a truss rod. They came right this morning. I installed the truss rod and I glued the fretboard on. So now it's time to look at some tool pads and we start machining the back of the neck. I'll start with the back because if I start for example by reducing the fretboard I will have an uneven surface to clamp. I have let the aircraft pass. I don't know if it's you can see it but this is a bird's eye maple fretboard. Nice figure, not something special, but I'm very pleased with this. So now it's time to put this neck through the CNC. I will start with the back of the neck, tuner holes, the inserts, the threaded insert holes, profile of the neck, and then contouring the neck profile. Then flipping the work over, you can continue reducing the fretboard, doing the radius of the headstock and logos. That's it. Then sanding, fretting, installing and all the good stuff. To compensate for the thickness of the fretboard while I'm while it's like this, I'm going to use these pieces of wood which roughly are the thickness of the fretboard. And I'm just going to let them hang there. So when I clamp down, they will clamp on those pieces. I got a message. Okay guys, back to the CNC. So first off, we can start with the back. And the first operations for the back are the drilling for the tuners and the threaded insert. Here I'm using a 6mm router cutter. After that, I have a contour operation for the profile of the neck and here I'm using an 8mm router cutter and I'm leaving 1mm of radial stock. So then later I can come with the downcut spiral and finish it up.
After that, I start removing some material for the profile of the neck using a 15mm cutter. And then finishing the contour with a quarter inch ball head end mill. And finally, finishing the profile with the 8mm downcut spiral cutter. So now that the back of the neck is finished, we can flip the blank and start machining top of the neck, starting with clearing this material for the headstock, which I'm using the 15mm cutter. After removing that material, now it's time to smooth this transition out with this tool pad using quarter inch ball end mill. Using the same end mill, I can start radiusing the fretboard. After that, we can settle the fret markers. Here I'm using a 1.8 millimeter end mill. And then we can do the inlay for the logo. Now this is this first tool pad I will clear some material. The other one will clear more material. These I'm using a 0.8 millimeter cutter. And for the final, here I'm using a 0.5 millimeter cutter. Mm-hmm.
Now, before finishing up with the frets, I want to cut the logo inlay. Now, what I'll do to machine the logo from the back. First, I will remove some material around the lettering using a 3mm cutter. You'll understand later why, why I'm doing this. And then I can finish up first using a 0.8mm cutter and then the final pass with the 0.5mm cutter. I'm machining this logo like this so I can take the machine part, flip it over and just press fit into the inlay pocket and that will be easier and less hassle. After finishing up with the logo the next step will be the nut using a 3mm router cutter. And then finishing up with the frets. Guess what, guys? We have a neck. The neck is ready. Finally, all went good. The logo came out really nice. So now I just need to sand down all the sharp edges especially the back contour and the fretboards. Install the fret markers, side markers, more sanding, fretting, and then we can continue with the build. I have parts ordered. They are in the mail already. Here's a little preview for what's coming. And for today, that's it guys. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it, and learned something from it. And until the next time, Take care and bye-bye.